After the wildfire success that was Halo Combat Evolved, the world knew that a sequel was inevitable. Armed with the feedback from Halo CE, Bungie knew that they wanted to fine-tune the weapon sandbox for the upcoming Halo 2. Some weapons would need to be repurposed or replaced altogether, like the assault rifle, for example, which felt less like a rifle and more like an SMG, which was why it was replaced with the SMG in Halo 2. The same applies for the Halo CE Magnum, which operated less like a pistol and more like a ranged rifle, which led to Halo 2 needing a pistol that actually felt like a pistol. And it was the inclusion of these two new weapons that led to an opportunity to introduce a brand new weapon to the Halo 2 sandbox. A new rifle for the UNSC, the Battle Rifle. So hello guys and welcome to my evolution of the battle rifle. I've been really looking forward to starting this series where I do a deep dive into the evolution of the different weapons in the Halo sandbox, really going into how these weapons change from entry to entry for better or worse, and what better place to start with one of the most iconic weapons in the entire Halo franchise, the battle rifle, which has its legacy in the Halo esports going back to the very beginning of its inception all the way now to the esports in Halo Infinite. I love this weapon. I pick it up every opportunity I get, be it multiplayer or campaign, so I really wanted to start with the battle rifle. I hope you guys enjoy this video if you do find yourself enjoying the video be sure to drop a like on the video so that it helps the video reach more Halo fans and you guys know it means a whole lot to me I also make new Halo videos every single week so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my new content but guys it's time to dive into the evolution of the battle rifle the original battle rifle was introduced in Halo 2, known as the BR-55. Its iconic design looks like a more stripped down or skeletal version of the iconic Halo Combat Evolved Assault Rifle. With both weapons being bullpup in their design and sporting a dark blue ammo counter, it just goes to show that these weapons are brothers in their design and complement each other respectively. But their roles in the Halo sandbox couldn't be further apart, with the battle rifle serving as an actual tactical ranged rifle, sporting a rounded scope, giving it a distinct silhouette that makes it stand apart from the assault rifle. With the added scope helping fill the role that was once held by the Combat Evolved pistol, the battle rifle can effectively put shots down range, making the weapon actually feel like a rifle instead of an SMG. And with the Halo 2 battle rifle utilizing hitscan, this meant its 3 shot burst was incredibly accurate, making it a very reliable weapon for both campaign and a mainstay for the Halo esports scene. With it essentially firing pinpoint accurate laser beams, which is why to this day people say the Halo 2 battle rifle is the most tight feeling and most reliable. And it's this original outing that left a legacy that future battle rifles and future Halo games would have a hard time living up to. I mean, even the sounds of a classic BR-55 cracking off shots gives me instant nostalgia of all the late night LAN parties I spent with my friends playing Halo 2 SWAT on Lockout. Memories I won't soon forget. With the technical jump in hardware from the original Xbox to the Xbox 360, Bungie had an opportunity to create a truly next-gen battle rifle. The result? The BR-55 Heavy Barrel, or BR-55HB for short. And with both of these rifles being BR-55 models, they share very similar designs. Though at Halo 3's launch, my teenage brain thought the BR-55 HB with its taller scope looked like something out of Rainbow Six. I don't know, I was young, it was a long time ago. But this new iteration of the battle rifle did come with some new red neon lights on the sides, which was a nice touch. And it's also worth mentioning that this new BR-55 got a new reload animation, which actually involved Master Chief pushing the bolt handle forward after putting in a new magazine, as opposed to the bolt handle moving back and forth on its own as it did in Halo 2. The changes to the Halo 3 battle rifle were not just cosmetic, unfortunately. The Halo 3 battle rifle has kind of a mixed reaction when it comes to its actual gameplay, going from hit scan in Halo 2 to actual projectile bullets in Halo 3, meaning if your target is moving from left to right, you actually have to lead your targets a little bit to accommodate for the slower moving rounds as opposed to the instant hit scan rounds seen in Halo 2, which led to the gameplay of Halo 3's battle rifle feeling less tight and reliable as it was in Halo 2, and though not as big of a problem in Halo 3's campaign, it was a problem in the Halo 3 multiplayer competitive scene. And though this just comes down to personal preference, I felt the Halo 3 battle rifle lacked some of the punch that the Halo 2 battle rifle had with its sound design, though it's definitely not the worst of the bunch. But at the end of the day, I've always felt that the BR-55 HB was a solid rendition of a truly legendary rifle, with a safe design but did leave room for improvement when it came to its gameplay. With 343 Industries taking over the Halo franchise, Halo 4 was to see an entire graphical and art style overhaul, including the return of the fan favorite battle rifle with the BR-85. 
The BR-85's design was and still is the biggest shakeup in the battle rifle's design in Halo's history. Manufactured with a lighter color tint than the BR-55 models and sporting a yellow stripe down the side of the rifle. And though the reception for the Halo 4 battle rifle's design was mixed, I've always felt that the blocky design of the BR-85 looked great with the Halo 4 version of Master Chief. And though not as good as what came before, I've always felt that this rifle looks great with this new armor design. A couple other notable changes were that the traditional rounded scope of the battle rifle was replaced with a square one, and the blue ammo counter no longer had blue numbers but the entire ammo counter itself was a dark blue. But nonetheless, whether or not you liked the new design changes to the battle rifle, the BR-85 was the highest fidelity battle rifle we'd ever seen up until that point and is just overflowing with attention to detail. It's also worth mentioning that the Halo 4 Battle Rifle got two new reload animations, one for a tactical reload and one for a full reload when the magazine is completely empty. 343 really went the extra mile when it came to Halo 4's sound design with its weapons. And though I love the new punchy sound effects for the Halo 4 Assault Rifle, I'm not a huge fan of the Battle Rifle sound design. It just sounds too electronic and high-pitched and is lacking the punch that the battle rifle has always been known for. And not to mention it gets more high-pitched the closer you get to the end of the magazine. But when it came to the gameplay of the Halo 4 battle rifle, it did see an improvement as it returned to the hit scan design from the BR-55 from Halo 2 and got rid of the projectile system seen in the BR-55 HB from Halo 3, leading to a tighter feeling battle rifle that just felt more reliable. But ultimately, the BR-85's design changes are seen as too much of a deviation from what made the design of the BR-55 so great. And though it was more reliable than the battle rifle we had in Halo 3, the design changes scared most people away. With the release of Halo 2 Anniversary, we once again got our hands on the legendary rifle, the remaster of the Halo 2 BR-55. Remade from the ground up, this legendary rifle was remastered in the highest fidelity possible at the time, and with all the added details, this might be my favorite version of the battle rifle. And though it functions identically to its Halo 2 counterpart with the same reload animations to boot, it's this weapon sound design that pushes it over the top for me, with a punchy gunshot sound effect that just wasn't possible on the original Xbox in 2004. Ultimately, this is a remaster of the classic rifle that started it all, and it's a faithful recreation that honors the legacy that this rifle started back in 2004. Oh boy, the BR-85 from Halo 5 Guardians, where to start? Basically, the BR-85 from Halo 5 Guardians is the exact same design as the BR-85 seen in Halo 4, but worse. For whatever reason, 343 removed the scope from the top of the battle rifle and by default replaced it with a red dot sight, and that completely messed up the silhouette of the battle rifle, and I honestly haven't completely forgiven it for that. And for whatever reason, the classic blue ammo counter that's been in every Halo game is yellow here, making it stand out even worse. But ultimately, the cardinal sin for me was the removal of the scope. It just changes the silhouette of the weapon too much for me, but I will say that the attention to the detail on the model is pretty good. It's pretty much exactly like the Halo 4 model, but with a darker color, almost like a green, but with more scratches. And like I said, the detail is good. It just looks wrong. But once again, it is worth mentioning that we do have a brand new reload animation for this version of the BR-85, and though its sound design isn't as great as the battle rifles of old, it is a bit better than the BR-85 that we had in Halo 4. It has a bit more punch, and it doesn't sound quite as electronic and high-pitched, and in my opinion, is a good thing. But ultimately, this is my least favorite version of all the battle rifles in the Halo franchise, and I know it's mostly because of the lack of a scope, and there are multiple variants in Halo 5's multiplayer, but in the campaign, this is what you get, and it's just my least favorite for the reasons I've given. And with Halo Infinite, 343 Industries didn't just give us a great campaign with the Banished, with great characters both new and old. They brought back the classic art style that legacy Halo fans like myself have been dying for, and along with it came a weapon that honored the legacy of all the battle rifles that came before, that being the BR-75. The BR-75 is meant to stand between the BR-55 and the BR-85, definitely taking most of its design inspiration from the classic BR-55 from the Halos of old. 
Returning to its roots with its dark color scheme and ditching the red neon light seen on the BR55HB, the BR75 also reverts back to its classic blue ammo counter with what appears to be a slightly larger scope. The BR-75 utilizes a hitscan-like design similar to that of the BR-55 from Halo 2 and even feels great to use in the large open environments on Zeta Halo. And just like before, the BR-75 features two new reload animations, one a tactical reload and the other a full reload once the magazine has been emptied. But the praise for the BR-75 doesn't just end at its gameplay and cosmetic design because its sound design is top tier, with gunfire with enough punch to make even the BR-55 blush all the way down to the crunching sound of loading a new magazine. The BR-75 is the culmination of everything that 343 has learned about making a great battle rifle in a great Halo game, and stands as a prime example on how to innovate for the future while honoring what came before. So guys, this was my evolution of the battle rifle. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as much as I've enjoyed making it for you because this video was a ton of fun to make, but guys, I gotta be real, this video took a hot minute to get out the door, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did find yourself enjoying the video, be sure to drop a like on it because it helps the video reach more Halo fans, and as you guys know, it means a whole lot to me. Be sure to let me know down in the comments which battle rifle is your favorite, and if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my new Halo content that I make every single week. But guys, that's all I have for this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.